today with uh, Andrew Hogue, who is a, an assistant professor in the Faculty of Business and IT, and he is going to share with us some of his insights about his major research interests, um, the course development work that he's been working on, and the intersection with what is the focus of this particular uh, course, problem-based learning. Um, so with that, um, I'll give it over to you, Andrew, and uh, intervene whenever we need to have additional questions. Okay. Um, so hi. Um, okay, I'll just give you a little bit about sort of what we do here and what, what I do and, and, and where I fit in with uh, problem-based learning, etc. Um, <clears throat> so I teach in the, uh, the game development program at the, uh, at the University of Ontario Institute of Technology in the Faculty of Business and on IIT. Um, so game development is an interesting sort of very multidisciplinary um, field of study. Um, the, the, the point is that basically what we, we have is it's an undergraduate program, it's four years long, and we want to teach students how to build video games. And uh, building a video game is, is not just as simple as dragging and dropping things or writing a story. Um, it, it combines a, a lot of different areas, a lot of different fields. In particular, um, it has the technical side of things of uh, computer programming, so it has some computer science background. Um, but also has the art, artistic aspects of it. Um, you have to be able to, you know, create the art assets and the three D models and and that sort of thing. There's also the story aspects, and then how do you bring it all together into a into a cohesive design that 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 in, in, engages the users and and and, uh, and is fun um, at the end of the day. So so it, it it takes a lot of effort and a lot of uh, people to to build video games. Uh, as an example. Assassin's Creed, uh, you've probably heard of. Uh, the first one costs on the order of $4 million to build it over four years, and 150 people worked on the project, um, made a lot of money as well. So uh, it's certainly a, a, a large endeavor. Um, so what we do in the, in the game development program is we've, we've recognized that it's very multidisciplinary. And we have uh, a group of students who are extremely di multidisciplinary themselves. Some people come in wanting to learn more about the art aspects of video games. Some people more want to learn more about the, um, the um, programming side, et cetera. And so trying to create a curriculum that um, satisfies everybody's needs is very difficult. And so what we decided to do is sort of take a more um, sort of a, a different approach to, to teaching these students um, than, like a, than a traditional computer science approach or a traditional art approach. Um, in Canada, usually what ends up happening for game development type of programs is you have a computer science curriculum that is a uh, standard, standard computer science curriculum, and they typically add a few game design or game development courses at the end of it and they call that a game development program. Um, what we try to do is try and take a more cohesive, integrative approach. And so that's where problem-based learning comes into play. Um, so yeah, I can go on if you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you, you're doing quite well. So if you want to pick it up from where you actually see the intersection with problem-based learning and uh, describe that a little bit, uh, that, that'd be uh, a nice segue to where we're actually heading. <clears throat> OK. So, um, so yeah, so the, you know, what is problem-based learning? And from, from what I've understood, it, this is a totally new field for me as well. My background is computer science. Um, so, you know, when it comes to education and teaching people in different ways, uh, I was, I was, I, I learned education by, uh, by, by looking at my professors and, uh, uh, which is not necessarily the best role model is to look at computer science professors as uh, educators. Um, they're pretty, pretty uh, introverted and antisocial, or I wouldn't say anti, but asocial. Um, <clears throat> and they, they don't engage the, the, the audience very well because the material is sort of in a way that, you know, is always presented in a way that here's, a, here's an algorithm, here's a solution, here's a problem, and then that, go off and do your own thing sort of <laughs> for a while. Um, but we try and we, we, we recognize that that's not the, the best approach uh, to teaching video games and how to develop video games. So what we decided to look at is sort of like, okay, what is this problem-based learning approach and what is, the, what is it, uh, what is it um, 
what are, what are the sort of the interesting bits and how can we take from that at least and sort of modify it in a way that works for us. Uh, so problem-based learning, as I understand it, is essentially you, you take groups of students and you have them explore a problem. Um, you give them a very ill-defined problem and they try and come up with sort of novel solutions to this problem. Um, and so this, is, this has been adopted quite well in, uh, in the medical field uh, at McMaster uh, and, and, and other areas as well, but that's sort of the one that everyone cites. Because the, the work that, it, that uh, doctors have to do is, is obviously very, uh, you know, they have to be able to search for solutions and, and come up with different novel uh, solutions to these problems. And they're not necessarily the same problems every time, so you have to be able to be fluid in your, in your uh, problem solving. Um, so what we took from this is we said, like, what we can do is we can um, make sure that students from day one work together in groups. Um, and we define sort of a problem, a problem space, and that problem space that we define is building a video game. Uh, now, obviously, building a video game doesn't necessarily have them do the, exactly what we need them to do in the right progression. So what we tend to do is structure it a bit more um, in the first couple of years. So what we've done is we basically have taken our standard curriculum and made a workshop underneath it that is the, uh, what we call the game development workshop, which is sort of where the problem-based learning approach comes into play. And in the, in the workshop, what ends up happening is um, a coordinator um, basically tells the students, you know, let's analyze a case study um, and let's look at a video game that we can deconstruct um, that exists already and sort of understand how it fits in with uh, what they're currently learning in all of their courses. And it's structured in such a way that um, they're going to be able to build up uh, knowledge in different aspects of these courses as they progress through the, through the workshop. Um, so basically, as an example, um, in first year in the fall semester, they take courses like Introduction to Computer Programming, uh, teaches them C++, all the basic programming knowledge and skills. Uh, but they also take things like creative writing and narrative, uh, narrative design. Uh, so in order to show them the relevance of all these different, uh, different courses, um, we integrate them together and say, there's a piece of that course inside of your game somewhere. And you have to define what that is. That's the ill-defined nature of it. Um, so the, the students get to, to explore that area with some constraints. Um, so the very the fall semester, they have to integrate the creative writing and the programming. They have to build a game that, that takes pieces of both and sort of um, explores that area. So they typically build things like um, story with character development. They have, to ex they have to show how that works and have interaction with the user uh, as the video game. Uh, for the video game part of it. So they typically do like a text adventure uh, from the 70s and 80s, um, similar to sort of the genre. Yeah. Um, I, I noticed in the, uh, the past week that you've actually published a paper on project-based learning. Yep. Um, do you see a distinction between logic-based learning and problem-based learning? I know this is sort of out of the blue, but I thought it was out of the blue. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, absolutely. There's certainly a difference. Um, <clears throat> I'm still learning the differences, uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no. I, I think what we've done is sort of, as opposed to exploring all the different problems in this larger space, we've said, here's a project, and you have to build this project, which is you know has some structure to it. So that it, it what the way uh, the differences that I see between regular PBL and project-based learning is sort of um, we, we have this more of a structure to it, and uh, and that structure is sort of developed to to enhance sort of the scaffolding uh, so that students know that they're making progress, et cetera, um, and we can help them along uh, to understand what they're doing. So the students are still learning as they are doing, yeah. but there's a little bit more. Yeah, assistance to them um, in the earlier years, as you were describing, and less uh, of that scaffolding or support um, when we get into years. Yeah, yeah. So would you characterize then the program as starting out with very much a project-based orientation, and towards the end of perhaps fourth year or something, they would be closer to a um, 
problem-based orientation a little bit freer? Yeah, yeah. So we relax constraints every year um, and, and sort of increase the, um, the, uh, the ability for them to, to come up with creativity and, and, and use that, that creative uh, expression uh, more, more so every, in every year. Um, obviously trying to teach them specific content, but at the same time letting them explore even more. Um, so in, in uh, fourth year they have a capstone project which uh, is similar, um, but what it does is it, they, they get to define the project, they get to define the problem and explore it that way as well. So, so as we relax constraints, they've learned um, all the, the core technology and the core um, ideas and concepts in order to actually build these games and by fourth year they're able to succeed in, in creating whatever they like. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is have you just describe a little bit more about the, uh, the actual tools that you're actually making use of um, as you go through the development of these games with these students. Um, when I was talking to you earlier, you were talking about um, specific um, uh, task engines that would actually do your, your major um, development for you, etc. cetera. Uh, can you describe a little bit more of that? Um, yeah, so in, in terms of developing uh, the actual games, um, students learn from scratch. So at the very beginning, they, they learn how to build uh, the video games from, from basics, from given nothing, they have to build all the art, all the assets, all of the 3D models, all of the uh, story, background, et cetera, all the programming, all the code. Um, they're not given any real tools to, to develop it. They have to learn um, you know, the basic software packages and stuff that you know, Photoshop and, and Maya and things like that that, uh, that are required. But they have to understand sort of how to integrate that into their own code. Um, and so that requires some effort on their part to really sort of figure out, it's like a puzzle, right? You know, how do, how do I develop code to solve this particular sub-problem and, and get my, my 3D model into my game? Um, and a lot of that's led um, through the discussions, et cetera, uh, with the coordinator. He helps them out a lot with, with, uh, with that core technology um, so they can learn how to do that and what is actually necessary to, to, to go forward with, with these, these, these things. Um, but yeah, as, as we get to third year, uh, third, first and second year are pretty much develop everything from scratch. Um, so they get a good base, uh, fundamental knowledge of how all this stuff works. And by the time we get to that, um, in third year, they, can, uh, they start to use more, more engine tools. Um, they start to build the tools themselves uh, because now they've, they sort of, they've understood what the issues are. It, because it's a learning process for them too, uh, they know what was the hardest pro hardest part of, of developing the previous game. So they get to develop tools and, and are, are forced to, to develop tools essentially as, as part of a different course in third year uh, to help them build their, their newer game. Um, moreover, they, they, get to they have to augment other tools as, as, as well that sort of take care of some of that low-level functionality so they don't have to redo all that stuff that they've done previously, uh, but can build at a higher level sort of focusing more on um, AI or, or decision making or strategy or, or uh, more higher level gameplay structures um, and that sort of thing. And AI being um, uh, artificial intelligence? Yeah. yeah. Still the same definition there. Okay. <laughs> um, can you go